In this tutorial, we're going to learn to knit this kitchen scrubby. And I wanted to show a tutorial on this because this, in my opinion, is the world's greatest kitchen scrubby. Uh, they not only really do the job well with being rough enough to clean up dishes, but they dry out really quickly and they don't hang on to anything. They rinse really, really cleanly. Now I make these and they last a long time and they soften up with use and they actually get kind of bigger with use. The reason I end up having to make more of them for myself and for my friends and family is because they eventually end up in the garbage disposal, <laughs> all chewed up and can't be used anymore. So you do have to make some. The good thing is once you're in, uh, you have the stuff out to make it, you can make a lot of these in a very short period of time. Now, this is something very different than we've ever done in a tutorial before because this is knitting with fabric. And you have some choices for what you're going to use. The fabric used in this is tulle, T-U-L-L-E, and it's also called mesh fabric or netting fabric. And there are some different ways that this is sold and um, how you can, how, uh, what, depending on the kind of scrubby that you want. This comes in, um, bolt and it's called, I think this was actually called netting fabric. This is sold uh, by the yard and if you buy it like this, you want to keep it folded. I still have it around the cardboard. You want to keep it like this for ease in cutting. Don't take it off of here and let it get into a, a mess, a pile, because when it's folded like this, you slide the cardboard out and it's easy to do the cutting to knit with it. This kind of fabric will make the, the roughest scrubby. Um, the other option you have is for this rolled fabric, this rolled netting. This is much finer netting, but it is, uh, it's a little less expensive than that, and it's a little easier to work with because you're all, just with these strips, it's easy to cut, if you know what I mean. You can, you can roll this out and cut your strips more easily than you can because this, there's a chance of this getting messed up and off the bolt and everything, and this is always really tidy and on the roll. Um, these little rolls are, are always in the sale baskets at the fabric store near my house. Like this, um, it actually says on here, tool spool. This was just a couple of bucks and you can get a lot of kitchen scrubbies out of this. So this will make a little bit of a finer scrubby. This will make a rougher scrubby. I like both. I'll tell you what I don't like. <laughs> I'm not taking this out of the Ziploc bag. I bought this roll of sparkly tulle, and I thought it would just make a cute thing, and I knew the sparkles would eventually come out and not be there anymore after it was kept in water for a long period of time. But this, <laughs> don't buy this. This resulted in blue sparkles covering every inch of my home, including my dogs. It made a nice scrubby, but this is never coming out of this plastic bag again. I'm gonna throw it away like this because it took me forever to vacuum up all the blue sparkles from <laughs> this project. So as cute as it is, stick with the non-sparkly tool. Okay, now that we've talked about the fabric choices you have for the netting, oh, one other thing, these are inexpensive at the fabric store, but if you can buy the end of a bolt, you can get a discount on um, the price, and that's what I did here, and that's how I got the cardboard with it. You'll want to cut this stuff so that you can knit with it, of course, and um, for the ones that I have here, I've used one inch wide netting fabric. Now, I put this out on my blocking board, which has a grid, and just cut along the lines, and it was really, really easy. Um, if you don't have a blocking board, don't worry about it. If you can stay close enough to an inch, there's no need for perfection here. It's going to knit up and no one's ever going to know that it's not perfect. Uh, this uh, is pretty easy to cut as long as it's like this because you can just cut one cut and have several feet of um, tool ready to go, ready to knit with. Okay, so let's go ahead. I think that's all I wanted to tell you about the fabric choices. Oh. As you cut them, roll them up into little things like this. Throwing them in a pile together, they'll stick together and it's hard to get them apart again. So roll them up in a pile like this and um, you'll see how many you'll probably need for the length of the fabric that you have um, as you get going with it. Anyway, it's such a simple project. The main thing is getting your fabric cut and ready to go. Okay, let's take a look at what I have here. 
This little scrubby was knit with this tulle mesh fabric, and it is really pretty rough. And on this one, you can see that I have the edges here, the um, poking edges, and that's because I knit across a row and cut the fabric, knit across a row and cut the fabric. I never went back and forth on this ever because I wanted to have this little edge on it. And then I'm going to show you the sparkle one here <laughs> without taking it out of the bag. This I, uh, is a much denser kitchen scrubby because I used two inch wide, whoops, two inch wide um, strips. And that's because this roll stuff is six inches wide, so I just cut it into thirds. And it made for a much denser um, scrubby, but it will soften and get even bigger with use. This one is going in the trash though, as I said. And this one is knit with just the regular netting fabric on the spool. And it's pretty tiny right now. And, but I, like I said, with use, this gets bigger and softer. Um, but I still think it's a good size right now. Okay, let me show you with casting on with this. I'm going to start with a long tail cast on, a slip knot. And if you need a review of the long tail cast on, I'll give you a link right here. My slip knot isn't moving very easily. Now, if you're used to knitting with yarn, this is a little bit rougher to knit with. And one trick is that you really want to take a look at each stitch, including the cast on, and make sure that it's tightening up around the needle properly. So pull each one and really take a look at it and make sure that it is good. Now, this being the most simple pattern in the world, we're going to cast on 18 and knit 18 rows and bind off. And that is the pattern. Okay, you get the idea here for the cast on. I'm gonna take that off because we're gonna jump over here to this piece that I already have going. And Knitting with this is just like casting on with it. You want to make sure each stitch is pulled tightly. You're not crazy tight, but the thing with the, the knitting with tool, especially this really rough stuff, is that if you're not watching, the stitch can get caught up and not pulled through, and you can have one crazy big stitch amongst all the other normal size stitches. So just watch your tension is what I'm saying. Oh, you see what happened there? I went to tighten it up and I pulled my needle out of a few stitches. I'm using DPNs here just because I like to use the shortest needles possible for a project and there is no need for long needles for this. Okay. So here we are, I just did, worked across the row, and because this is not yarn, you're going to need to attach a new uh, strip of fabric pretty often, uh, depending on how long you cut your fabric. And so I'm actually just gonna pretend here that I ran out of fabric and cut that. Um, you always want to start a new strip of fabric at the end of a row. Don't start it in the middle because it's more likely to come unraveled there and a knot will show. So we're gonna start a new um, strip of fabric here at the beginning of this row. And to do that, I'm just going to put my needle into the first stitch, find that end there and really give that a tug, pick up a new piece of netting and leaving myself like a six inch tail, just wrap the needle with that new strip and continue knitting. Usually what I do is I knit about four stitches.
and then I go back and I find the end that I just finished knitting with and the one that I just started and I tie a knot there. And we can just leave that for ends to weave in later. Okay, you get the idea for that. Always start new strips at the ends of the row. Okay, now we're going to talk about, let me just slide these over so I can be on one needle. We're going to talk about counting your stitches, counting your rows. You don't have to keep a row counter for this because if you knit 18 or 20 rows, you're good. You just want to knit to about this size. But an interesting thing about garter stitch and keeping track of where you are is each one of the garter stitch ridges counts for two rows. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. I just got 18 rows here and I'm ready to bind off. That's just a little lesson in counting garter stitch rows. Now, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and pretend that I've bound off and I have this, um, actually I have a lot of extra netting in here that I don't need. Um, besides all these pokey ends, I have a bunch of extra netting in here. To weave in these ends, you're going to do it just like normal with a tapestry needle. Thread that onto the tapestry needle and we're going to weave it in just like we would any other knitted end. And if you would like to see a video on um, weaving in ends the way that I'm doing it here, where it's easier to see on proper yarn instead of fabric, I'll give you a link right here. Okay. I've woven that in about an inch into the work. I give it a stretch to make sure that it's not pulling anything tightly and I go ahead and cut that end short. Now this stuff is sticky enough that that end will stay, stay put pretty darn well. And then you go through the process of weaving in the other ones, checking the knots as you go to make sure they're nice and tight before you weave in the ends. And then this kitchen scrubby is ready to go. Like I said, it will soften up and get bigger with use and it will last forever um, as long as you keep it out of the garbage disposal. And that's it, the world's greatest kitchen scrubby. Good luck.